Okay, so today we are going to do a flat racing saddle. Flat meaning they race on the flat, not over hurdles. Okay, that's a flat racing saddle. This is a very simple one that I've um, designed my pattern after. There's different types, so I don't want anybody to say, well, that's not what so-and-so uses. Well, it's, you know, there's different types. And this is the one we're going to do. Very simple. Um, it really is a just a way of getting... Um, a pair of stirrups to stick to a horse so a jockey can use them right that's there's really not much more than that maybe a because there's no padding right that's not really anything for safety or comfort of the, the rider in any way this here is like a steeplechase or practice saddle um, not doing this one but I want to show you there are different types so if you go out there and you see these different types there they're either regional or or they um, are for a different type of race okay so like I said flat saddle that's what we're making today um, we'll also make the surcingle um, and girth. This will be made out of elastic. Um, there's there's two girths, basically one that goes to the saddle and one that just wraps around the saddle and the horse. Okay, we'll talk first about the pattern. Um, I always like to, in my patterns, I give you the reduction ratios and tell you that you can try this for smaller models, reduce it by whatever amount. So the cool thing with having the tree and everything and the stirrups, all of that, you can just uh, reduce it down until it's so small you can't work it, which is about the stable mate size. Of course, there's brilliant stable mate tack makers that, that do it. All right, so that's in there. Um, and then you have this page all right, so we'll talk about all of these pieces. The first thing I always do is cut out my little, um, the, the boxes, okay? So this box, this box, you know, just cut them all out separately, and you end up with a stack that looks like this. So we'll talk about blankets first. I'm not going to do blankets in this video. That's fabric work. I do leather work. Um, and there's different ways to do them. So, I mean, uh, just whatever you feel comfortable doing, silk screening, um, or, or just using these stencils, you know, put this on cardstock, cut out the one, and, and you now have a stencil to paint a one, right? Um, now what I did do is I showed you there's three different, um, pads that they actually use. One is a thin felt pad, and, um, in the real world, it's 22 by 24 inches. I did find that. So I reduced it down one nine because it's a traditional scale, one nine scale. And so that would mean your felt pad would be two and a half by two and three quarter. Same thing with the saddle pad. There actually is a pad that goes over the felt pad. Um, and that one is 17 by 21 in the real world. It's one and seven eighths by two and three quarter. And then you have your numbered blanket. And this is the one that's usually provided by the racetrack on the day of the race. And this is the one that's colored. And um, so the, the color background and the number will be different. It makes it easier for them to, the people in the booth, to track who's, who's doing what, right? And that's 42 by 44. Usually the front is folded under a little bit if it's too long for the horse. Um, so that's how they get the fit. But um, there you go. If you want to, uh, it's four and a half by four and three quarter, by the way. So if you want to use these, you want to reduce it, you're going to have to take your real world and reduce it by your ratio. So for one nine, I went and found out, you know, how many inches is it divided by one nine. And then that tells me what I, it, you know, gives you your, well, you have to do the math. So you do the math. Okay. We have all of these pieces, right? And you can see, I mean, it's not exactly, it's not exactly that uh, shape, but it doesn't matter, right? It's, it, 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 there's so many different ones. I'm not worried about it. So we have all four of these, five of these. And the first thing we're going to do is the stirrups because you, I've never found any that were really in scale. And regular English stirrups that you can get the cast ones, they're just too big, okay? So we'll, we'll show you what I do. This is just a breakfast bar box top, okay? And um, I would find, you know, it, you, it's the perfect thickness of cardboard. So cereal box, something like this. But you can see it's just a pretty good thickness. Um, and it's sturdy, too. It's not um, wimpy. And I would um, glue stick. Like this, just glue stick. Probably a little bit better than that, so it sticks really well. And then I'd get out um, an, a knife, uh, a razor, an exacto, whatever, and um, cut these out. All right. And um, I would go from center out. I've just learned it's easier to go center out. So get your smallest piece done, then cut your centers, and then cut it out. And once you've done that, you've got these. Let me cut what you 
can see those, okay? So now I've got stirrup shapes. Well, obviously they're the wrong color. So you take a small piece of wire and whatever you have that, that's thin and disposable, unless you wanna make a lot of these and then you can reuse them, but um, you're going to stick the wire through the hole. And what you're really doing is this just so you can dry them, right? Because you don't wanna touch them and, and we're gonna paint them, but we're not gonna, we're gonna dip paint, right? So now I have a way that um, I have a hook, right? So I can hook it over something and you have to figure out what you're gonna hook it over before you dip it. I just have a place in my office that if I'm doing a few of them, no big deal. If you're gonna do a lot, you know, string a line if you want and just have them hang over that. Now, one of the reasons why I wasn't, um, I hadn't, wasn't ready for the book yet was uh, little details when prototyping. And you'll find, um, if you prototype your own saddles, it's, it's really just a series of failures, all right? So if you can't handle failure, you can't handle prototyping. You, know, you have to realize failure is just one step closer to success. And that's life too, not just prototyping. Okay, so um, I tried different ones, uh, acrylic will work. Um, it has to be thin enough. If it's too thick, it just gets all globby. If it's too thin, it doesn't stick. So you kind of have to, you know, play around with the paint to get the right thickness that you want. Um, today I'm going to use um, enamel. This is a, obviously we all know the brand of this. Um, probably says it right there, Testers. And um, this stuff takes quite a while to dry. Um, so let me just show you how we do this. It's really pretty simple. So I just take off the lid now that I've shook it up really well. And uh, we're just going to make sure it cooperates. I've already tried this. I know it will. Okay. And um, just dip it in there and then pull it out. And then you can do several dips. The more dips of this you do, the thicker it gets. But if you look, you can see that now we have silver, right? And then, um, how, like I said, however many dips you want to do, every dip makes it a little thicker, but um, it can be tacky when you dip it, so it doesn't have to be, um, there, I'm hanging that up. Um, so, you know, you can dip it three or four times that first day and get something. Now, here's, um, here's a couple that have, um, they've been dipped, I see, and um, they're not all fuzzy on me, are you? There you go. So... There you go. This one here turned out really good. This one's okay. I mean, I could probably dip it a few more times, you know. So if I wanted to be really picky, I could make these look, you know, like they're real silver. Uh, I'm not going to be picky, though. All right, so to finish off your, um, yeah, I'm not going to live show these, so I just want to show you guys what to do. All right, here we go. So we will take off the um, wire because we don't need that anymore and then I'm gonna take um, to finish these off now this can be any color I have enough black and you want a pair of scissors and you're gonna kind of get it just a little bit uh, smaller I don't actually didn't actually put the um, stirrup treads on the pattern so oh, shame on me but anyways um, what I'm gonna do Let's see, so I'm just cutting a strip. And this was actually scrap. <laughs> and um, you're going to take and I usually do more than one wrap because there would be um, like a, a platform here for the stir for the jockey's foot. And, and then it would be covered. Well, platform whatever is, um, we can't do that. I tried it. It just didn't, not in the cardboard. It didn't work all that well so that's about right because it's never you know full you can make it bigger um but i'm gonna um i do it which way i do it this way so i'm going to wrap it a couple times and um, that means getting a little bit here i don't know if you guys see that okay and then i'm gonna Bugging me that I have glue on my finger now. Okay. And then, and then, yep, yeah, okay. And then we'll go ahead and do one more glue right about there. So, 
hold it until it dries. And then we'll just kind of flatten it. And there's your racing stirrup. All right. You might have to uh, get a knife and cut a little bit out of there so that your um, whatever you're going to use for your stirrup leathers will be able to fit in there. Uh, okay, so next thing is our saddle tree. And um, if you guys know me at all, you know I like to make my trees out of aluminum can because it's inexpensive and easy to find, right? So what I do, glue stick, because I am... The lover of the glue stick method. Ooh, I didn't really do that. Alright. We find whatever the top and the bottom were cut off. And then we're just going to find a place to put this. And if you notice, we're going with the curve. See how it curves up? That's how we want to do it. Oh, we're not fighting the um, natural bend of the tree, right? And then we cut this out. And you get something that looks like that, okay? And I'll get some smaller scissors to cut around it. But um, cut it out of the big piece uh, so you're not fighting all of that extra, okay? And that's the trick. Okay, so let's talk about these pieces. Now, I've, I've cut away my uh, seat. This is, this is actually the whole top, so I call it seat, but it's everything, right? Um, I'm going to put that aside, and we're going to talk about the, um, these are for the girth. All right, so you've got you've got the long one, um, you've got the three smaller ones, and if you looked at the, the picture, you'll see that you have two for the regular girth, and then you have two for the surcingle, and then these are additional pieces. It's just easier to have them cut out when you need it for your um, the the loops that hold your your longer strap here in place. Okay, so that's what those are. Now the best thing for these is to get them out of a calf kip or two three ounce. Um, because you need to sky them, they need to be strong when they're thin, um, and so and these wrap around. So you want to make sure you can thin them really good, so you don't get a lot of bulk. Um, so that's that's what I recommend on these. Um, and what I mean on that, a two three ounce calf or kip. Here's you know this is black. You can see how um, it's relatively thin, but it's really strong. See, there's no stretch to it, right? And um, you put your pieces on there. Um, and then you cut them out and you end up with pieces that look like this, okay? Okay, so let's talk about this top piece because this is going to be where you can make some decisions. Now, I, um, one of the reasons why I hadn't quite done the book yet was because this piece comes in a bazillion different colors and color combinations. And um, so the seat can be one color and then these can be a different color. And usually it's super shiny. And um, from what I've read, not necessarily even made out of leather. So that'll give you an idea of how much fun this is going to be. Even though it's one little piece, you can get real decorative with it, all right? Um, so you're going to want to cut it out of something and then paint it. And decorate it and whatever so the um, so you can use two three ounce two three ounce taste takes paint really well but you'll need multiple layers and then you'll need to make sure you use like a shellac coat or a super shiny what super sheen more than one coat however you want to finish the top if you don't want to use tooling leather then you can use like patent leather so if you have like a black patent leather or red patent leather beautiful and then you just make it an all red saddle so I was just going through looking for colors that I might have and um, actually I didn't really have any colors so um, what I'll do is I'm just gonna make a white saddle all right I get done um, but just because it's uh, it's what I have and I was like using what I have um, but if I really wanted to make it for a particular horse, I'd probably just use tooling leather. In this case, I'm going to use a chrome tanned. And this chrome tanned white is, uh, there's not a lot of stretch in it, which is good. Sometimes you get chrome tan and it's got so much stretch in it. It's great for fabric, like if you're going to wear it for a blouse, but um, not so good for, for tack making. So what I would do, because I am going to make like uh, decorations on the top here, is I am going to, to um, glue this to the top. Um, 
on tooling leather if you're going to do it to the top and then you plan to do finished work on the top. Um, I would uh, make sure you soak the paper off and wash the glue really, really good. I would probably wash it off, right? Um, probably the same thing on chrome tanned because I'm sure this stuff can be some of this chrome tanned. At least I, I dye and paint, you know, any leather. Um, some people have encountered leather that's resistant, which is, you know, understandable. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, onto the top side. Um, so that I can get my details in the right place. And um, let's see here. I glue sticked it, and now I just want to make sure that it fits. Right? And so I would go ahead and cut that out. Um, okay, so the next piece is actually the last piece, and this is the, the underskirt. Basically, it's just going to hold layers together for you. And, and then this uh, finished piece in the front uh, to give the, um, the, the pommel here a, a finished look. Um, so on this, um, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what color it is. I've seen it in brown. It's, um, but you can make it the same color, different color, however you want to do it. Um, I think a two, three ounce is a little bit thick, um, but you could, if that's all you have, you could use a two, three ounce as long as it's a thinner or a calf or a kip, which tends to be a little bit thinner uh, than a regular two, three ounce tooling leather. I know calf is almost impossible to find these days, uh, but you can maybe find kip. Um, it's a little bit older animal, not, not yet mature. Um, but what I'm gonna use is um, a, a skyver, and um, skyver can come in different thicknesses. Um, this was a, a, I bought this stuff by the pound. It was a white, um, and I, I dye it all the time, but it came white. And um, basically uh, what it is is they, when they go to make suede, they take the top layer off, and what's left over is this. <coughs> so sometimes it can be really inconsistent in the thickness. And um, if it's chrome tanned, it's, it's going to have a lot of stretch. So I like the thin stuff for a lot of the other saddles that I make, but there's always, a, with what I bought, there's like always a section that's thicker. And um, technically, I wouldn't use it for a lot of my saddles. I would use it for this one. Because um, if you look, here's, you know, there's the thickness of this as opposed to the edge where you can see it's almost uh, the thickness of toilet paper in this area here. It's just really, really paper thin. But this here is good. And um, it's not, it, it doesn't really matter if there's flaws on the front. This is actually pretty clean. Um, but I would use, I would use the thicker part of the skyver um, and uh, just go ahead and um, glue stick that on it and then we'll, we'll cut it out, okay? I'm not gonna have you guys uh, sit and watch me um, cut out all of these pieces. Uh, so um, I'll go ahead and take care of this and then I'll be back and show you the next step. Okay, just a quick note about skiving. I've been kind of skiving these pieces, but um, if you've never skived before, it's basically a process of taking a, a blade and um, just kind of getting a little bit of the extra thickness off the back. Um, you have to be careful on these. These are actually pretty thin, so I'm going to take the paper off with the, with the knife. And with it, I'm going to take a little bit of, you know, you can see it's not that much. And just trying to thin them down. I already did that piece. Hopefully you can see my right place. But, um, so just by carefully getting the paper off, I'm already going to get enough of this that it should be thinner. Be able to fold over. And I fold it over onto the elastic, right? Uh, all right. Okay. So, okay, now that I've cleaned up that skiving mess, um, on the rest of these pieces, uh, you can leave the paper on the tree. You can pull the paper from the tree, no big deal with or without paper. Uh, we don't need the paper on our piping. So, we can remove that. And, um, and let's try the, I don't need it on here either. Oh, maybe. Oh, oh, oh. Sometimes you just gotta let it dry for a little bit or work the paper and then it'll let loose. So, and it's making a liar out of me and I like that on video because 
you get to see reality book, you know, you can edit out the... All right, well, I'm going to waste way too much time trying to show you how to get the paper off. But it will come off. That's going to go forward there. There we go. And with Skyver, it's better to pull it as close to the paper as possible. So that it gets the best leverage. There we go. So. That's done. Now on our seat, there's a couple of cuts you need to make. That's why I have the cutting board out. Um, this is gonna be for your um, stirrup keepers. Um, it's on your, your saddle. Not all saddles, uh, racing saddles have them. Uh, usually because they'll make the stirrup leather so short that you don't have the extra hanging out. But uh, the particular saddle we were looking at does have it. So I'm just gonna make a small slit. Um, there's a couple ways to do it, but there's a small slit on both sides. That way when the stirrup leather comes out, it's got something to held into place, right? And then these are where the stirrup leathers come from. These are never exposed because this is the only comfort the jockey gets is he's not gonna get a knee pinch from this here because um, it is kind of covered up with this um, little piece of leather. That's the only benefit they get, okay? Um, there you go. So we've got, um, see how that, okay. And this leather's still a little bit thicker than it should be. Hmm, didn't notice that. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is um, top details. And you can do your stitches with, um, with a, a needle and you poke little holes in if you want. Um, and that's how I used to do it. Um, I still think it's probably the, um, if you get them really close together, it's more realistic. Um, on a saddle like this, though, the, the details are incredibly important. So I um, was on a discussion, and um, somebody said, hey, I've got this really cool. It was Lisa with Smalley, Smalley Salary, all right? And she introduced me to this tool, which has got these little, you know, uh, tiny, tiny little, um, uh, it's a wheel and these things push in and it'll give you kind of that, that look. So what I would do is, if we remember what the picture looked like, probably don't because it's been a while, um, but it has a detail all the way around the outside of the edges. And then um, these here, which could also define your, your colors for, you know, if you want to paint these red, maybe the seat white, right? So um, I have to put on glasses that allow me to see teeny tiny details so bear with me now I found when using this tool that it works better to push away from me and there we go and then just in case I decide to paint it I brought the stitch lines all the way to the edge and then I'm gonna turn Works much better on a slick surface like marble, which is what I'm working on right now. Okay, and then stop right there. So these paper lines make it easier. All right, so let's see how that came out. Because I don't need the paper. I'm gonna work the paper a little bit before I rip. Try and get it to let go. Glue stick doesn't really like to stick to leather, so there we go. Let's see, it'll like to just let go all by itself. And working leather doesn't really hurt it. In fact, sometimes it just makes it better, more worn, more used. So it's not super stiff. Let's see. There we go. And, um, looked better on the paper didn't it so let's see let's see if I can what I can do to I'll definitely see that too fault with the really faint lines left by it 
So I just learned something here. You can't, um, paper's not going to do much more than give you a um, faint outline. Unless you need to follow that faint outline. It gives me that, and so now I can do this all over again. Or whatever they like to call it. So, <coughs> so we try and match the um, the holes here. That's what I'm doing. The previous holes so that it doesn't look like I. That's how. We do our stitching edges, okay? Never rush, even though making you watch something incredibly boring. All right, um, so that's what that tool does. Okay, let's start with the girth. Um, girth should be, hopefully I don't have blur in it. Okay, the girth should be relatively simple. Um, I don't have measurements on the elastic. You have to measure it to a model. All right, and I picked Probably the only thoroughbred I've got left in my collection. Odd that I don't have that many thoroughbreds. Um, okay, so these are buckles, and um, I got these from Rio Rondo. Um, I don't make my own buckles. I just think the this, these uh, stamped out of uh, nice thin metal. Is, uh, these are perfect. Um, they do come connected, uh, like five, you know, and so you have to be really careful and separate them. And then there's this um, there's this little tip. Uh, the connector piece and you kind of uh, shave that down um, it can be sharp so you don't, you don't want it to scratch your model so that's basically how that works I've pretty much cleaned those I've skived these um, and um, they're 332 seconds okay uh, if you want to use narrower you'll have to make these obviously smaller if you're doing a smaller scale they have to be smaller um, go ahead and put that over uh, through the middle right um, and then through the other side. Okay, so you're wrapped around the center bar. Okay, that's how you do it. You wrap around the center bar. Okay, and um, they it should be right about there. Okay, and then we're going to flip it over and we'll glue it. If you're not using leather, you can like clamp it with a um, little clips so that it holds till it's dry. Um, different fabrics will behave differently. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and um, sorry, we're not going to do it to this piece. This piece is actually a tongue; it's not a buckle. So I only needed three buckles, and I pulled out four. Um, we only need three. And if I find that I cut it a little bit too thick, sometimes you do that when your hand, you know, when you're cutting out, you, you get outside the line instead of inside the line or whatever. Um, you can you can trim it uh, just enough to fit the buckle. And there's my second one. Not quite. So there's the second one. And you see, we got a good, we got a really good fold over amount. I could probably skive that after it dried to get some, rid of some of that thickness. This one here is a little bit, I think that's too thick, so uh, I may have to, yeah, it's not going to fit my buckle. So I'll show you just, you know, just kind of, um, just a little bit towards the center, all right, a little bit of a wedge. I'm going to make it just a little bit thinner so that my buckle will get in there. And so this part is going to, this end here is going to fold over. Nobody's going to see it. So it's okay if it's not perfect, right? You just want to make sure what people can see is, um, is as perfect as possible. All right, so we'll put that on there. See, I'm constantly just doing tiny modifications that are necessary just to, to get the look I'm, I'm looking for. And um, I'm 
gonna hold that in place, put that aside, put that aside. Now, I've got two different um, lengths of elastic, and obviously it's white uh, because that's that's what you know um, I had at the store. And that okay. So the um, if you look at the picture, I've got two different. This is the the stir the saddle. Okay, so your saddle is going to be your thicker, right? And then you've got your um, Sir single and it's a it's a thinner leather a thinner elastic okay so that's why I've got two and as far as length I mean every model is going to be have different girth every horse has a different girth and if you want to fit um, then um, you're going to have to kind of kind of do a good estimate this is what I got left for my thoroughbreds it's pretty cool it's a 2007 limited edition um, so I know that I'm going to buckle this a tiny, tiny saddle, right? So it's really going to buckle like way up here, um, unless I want to extend that. So I can, I'm going to make my billets longer, uh, but it's going to be right about here because it's a tiny saddle, right? So I'll go ahead and it's always easier to make it a little bit longer. If you had to later, you can make it smaller, but I'll go ahead and say, okay, right about there. That's what I'm anticipating. Okay. And I don't have any idea how long that is. Probably longer than a dollar bill. So um, I'll just go ahead and cut that. Um, let's see. So that would be my saddle girth. And so I'm going to take one of these. And I want it at the end, right? And on the other side, you'll see, I might want to just take a little bit here off the corners so it doesn't stick out, right? Just a little bit. And then I'm going to put glue. Since I'm gluing to elastic, I'm gonna want some clips because this is not, and I'm gonna be generous with the glue because I'm gluing to fabric. And the fabric is gonna behave differently than leather. So I'll go ahead and center that to the little tab. Right, and then I'm going to fold over. That won't stay in there. Let me do fold where it should have folded. There we go. Fold it in the right place. And then fold over. Silly girth. Come on. Even on me, You're making me look bad. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more glue on this side. And then some handy little clips. Same thing on the other side. Kind of trim a little. A little bit of a point, not a lot, because I don't want to lose my gluing area. I might pre wrap these, so it might be a little bit easier after I put the glue on. So. make sure I know that I'm on the correct side when I do this so I don't have more on one side one on the other. All right, fold that over. Oh, that worked better. And fold that over. There we go. Okay, it's going to 
to see that. Okay. So put that aside. Now our narrower elastic, where are you hiding? Goes all the way around, right? So pretty much we're gonna do and all the way around with a little bit of an opening, right? Because we do want to be able to pull it a little tight. So I'd say about a half inch of an opening, because that's about what you're going to want there. And we'll go ahead and cut that. And then we're going to do this one here. This is going to fold over a little bit on itself. So, let me get this clip and go all the way. And then on this side, we have the tongue, the buckle tongue. So, always I will turn this around I'm gonna put the shorter side down first need a good connection because once you go to girth up this elastic if this connection isn't good the elastic will come loose <laughs> And it'll whoosh. yes, I did have that happen. All right, that's good. So we're gonna set those aside to dry, and then on the uh, sur single, we'll, we'll do these, which is the keepers for this this tongue here. Okay, but that's that's put aside. So I want to make sure it's really dry before I do anything else now. At, at this point, I mean, I may, after I get off, you know, go ahead and paint this or something just to, to jazz it up a little bit. But um, basically our next step is going to be to put on our tree. And um, if you'll see that the tree is going to have, you want to make sure it's slightly in front of your uh jockey, um, sorry, your, your um, stair poles here, stair leather holes, right? But it's slightly behind, and then, and then you'll notice it also is not quite, um, back here I have like a, a lip, and that helps um, this here to adhere, okay? So that's what you're looking for, and we're not going to bend it yet, we're just going to use the natural curve right now. glue in place. It's like I said, pretty easy. And go ahead and put that in place. And um, I would also like kind of clip this in because you want good contact. And set that aside to let that dry really good especially that right there's not I want to put some more clips there okay now 
Now for this piece and this piece, what we'll do is we're gonna, we can fold this over and um, we just basically wanna get a finished edge um, right in here, okay? So I'm just going to um, just in there. And then I can't see anything I'm doing in that camera. And then I'm gonna carefully fold it over. And if you notice, I'm not folding it completely in half. I'm just folding the front. And um, if I knew, it, you know, scale, if I knew I had measurements by sight, I would say that's probably a sixteenth of an inch there, right? And then I would just go ahead and glue it right under that very front. So I've made a little ledge there. I'm gonna take that little ledge and glue it to the very front um, of that piece. And I'm doing a wrong side to wrong side, right? So when I put this on the front, I have a finished edge. And when it bends down, it'll look like a finished edge, okay? That's that, and this is pretty much done. Let's talk about what you're gonna use for your stirrup leathers and also for how we're gonna connect the stirrups to the saddle. What you can do is figure out, you know, what are you gonna do for your lace? Now this is, um, this is actual lace, and it's super skinny ribbon, and I found it once in my life and I bought like yards and yards and all sorts of different colors so I have white left and um, this is it's a 16th inch so it's like 16th inch leather lace I'm going to use this because I have it okay so when I do my English saddles I create a stirrup bar out of straight pins these are a little long but again that's what I have so I have to cut some of this off and um, basically what I'm trying to do is create a bar like right there, right? And in the real world, if this was used, if this was our rivet used for assembly, the, um, it would go through the tree, okay? So if I'm going to estimate where I would do this, I better get myself a board. So I'll just draw my pins. And then I need an awl or something that's gonna make that hole. So this is an awl, right? You all know, all AWL. And so I'm gonna estimate, because I want the bar to be right about here, right? So I think I'm gonna do it right about here in the front. And we wanna make it symmetrical, so same on the other side. Is that right? <coughs> Sorry about the off. Uh, you go drink something. All right. There. Is that about right? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so I got my two holes, and um, they kind of go through the tree, which is what I want. And then I'm going to get rid of this board. Sorry. I'm going to push it in the hole, and then using this one here, where's my other pliers? Hang on, I gotta find my other pliers, these are. Okay, so I'll show you the difference. These are the ones I was trying to use and, and these are the ones I need to use. And um, it's just a little bit smaller, which is fine, okay? But, uh, I mean, that, well for this work, I need, I need as teeny tiny a bend as possible. So I'm gonna get it on my very first tooth. I don't have a lot of, um, thickness on this so if I there all right so I want that to lay flat and then I want my bar see that there's where this 
that's where the stirrup leather would go in. So I need to bend it right at the edge of that. Like that. And here we see that so that stirrup leather actually has a bar to connect to. This is like advanced user stuff. And then I need to hide it so it doesn't come out. So I'm going to bend it one more time. And um, I'm hopefully going to be able to tuck it right in there. Make sure it's flat. So, so I've got a right, place for my stirrup leather to hang on to. Um, and now I'm going to be able to try and hide this when I go and put the whole saddle together. What I will do on this is it's a little too long, so I want to get some of this tip off. Right here. Alright, so I have less of this to worry about, and that needs to go in the trash so I don't hurt myself. But that's pretty much what we got. See that? So now I have my stirrup bars, and um, if I do this, I suppose I could put a little bit of skiver or something to hold them in place. So it's got to be a little bit more. I could hold them like right there. Um, something that's not going to add too much to the bulk. So, let's see where the bars are. That's good. So let's see. I've got I've got this. It was scrap. And I'm just gonna cut myself a small piece, and then I'm gonna glue in here. Relatively good. All that metal just squeeze out, but I'm trying to hold the metal in place. So. A little extra isn't going to hurt. Let me show you they're, where they're supposed to be. Only further apart. That one worked out really good. This one's going to be a little bit there. All right. And then I'll just um, do that to hold them in place. They clip them if I can, clamp, clamp, clip, whatever. And um, maybe just a little bit more. It's funny how one comes out really good. One is kind of like, oh, like that, like that. Okay. So, modify, modify. There we go. Okay. So now we have our stir bars. And that's. This. I'm going to need these uh, leather keepers, stirrup leather keepers. And hey, look, I clipped this little piece of leather lace. And so on the other one we looked at, it was um, actually wrapped around the edge and into the piping detail. Well, we can't do that. We're going to do a loop. Let me show you. Because you don't have a lot of room to make this, otherwise I'd make two slits. I don't have a lot of room for that. So we're going to take and um, push a loop. Always really good for making holes bigger, by the way. So we're going to fold this over. It's going to be about an inch of um, lace that I'm using here. But uh, we're going to fold that over. And make sure the holes for the back side. And um, I'm going to push that in to the hole that we made bigger that decided to close up on me. Okay. And um, we don't need a huge loop. So what will happen is this will, will flatten this out like that. See? 
and that was way bigger than it needed to be. That uh, that's all right. I'm gonna pull it down a little further to cover that. So that's what we're going to use for our leather keep or stirrup leather keeper, right? And that means on this side we need to glue this stuff down. And because it's lace and not leather lace. but I needed to be able to manipulate it and if it's too small my fingers are too fat to deal with I hope I'm not losing my voice it feels like I'm losing my voice that would be bad all right so <clears throat> on this side we can now huh, should cut that first we can cut this shorter than the edge right long enough that I have something I can actually hold and work with right? and we'll find the hole sometimes poking from the other side will tell you where the hole is we are so close to being here and then you can do whatever you want for, for details. If you want to paint the saddle, you can get that, right? All right, so maybe. I know the hole's open. In. And now we can reach in a little. Can we? Oh, I think I got it. It freezed a lot. Okay. Okay, not too badly. Do the sloop. You want to? It only needs to be big enough for that stirrup leather. So you look, it's really not that big, right? Because I'm using exactly the same lace, so I don't need a whole lot. Okay. Good. All right. So on this side, we'll go ahead and glue everything down. All of that is drying before we you know do the final uh, layers together uh, we need to deal with our stirrup leathers and again I'm using the same uh, lace that I used just recently for the um, stirrup leather loops um, now you're gonna have to estimate your length and I'll, I'll show you what I did this is this is what I came up with then you can um, decide it for yourself so basically um, this is important, especially if you're doing smaller scales, because you'll have to estimate, right? So it has to, you need about a quarter of an inch for a buckle, all right? So I'm going to, and I know the bar is right there. I know I want my stirrup to hang right to the edge of my saddle, because that's what it does. And then I want it to come all the way back up, okay? So I'm going to double that. Then I need extra for it to go through this, you know, the holder, right? And so then I would cut it, you know, right about there. It can be too long and you can cut it later. Don't cut it too short, all right? Then the next step on preparing these stirrup leathers. So put that aside, show them to be dry. All right, so the next step, and it's this is for lace, okay? Um, leather lace, of course, is different, but if you're using fabric lace, and this is supposed to look like nylon, you know, so nylon stirrup leathers, okay? Um, although they're a finished edge, so they could almost look like leather with finished edge, double braided, whatever. 
um, one of this stuff. I wish I could find it again. Okay. So what you want to do on your ends so they don't ravel is just to um, put a little glue on it. Because this stuff likes to, the ends like to ravel. So if you, you could use, um, it doesn't have to be glue, but that, it's something that will be like a no fray or whatever. White glue works. Um, and then, um, I really don't have to do it on both sides. Um, and then uh, the side that uh, that you've glued after the glue is dried, which what I did dries it up pretty quick, go ahead and put a point on it, see? And now because it's glued, it'll actually hold that point without fraying. It's really cool. All right, and then on your stirrups, you know, I open my hole just a little bit. And it should be just enough to be able to put that through. Voila. All right, now I need two 16th inch buckles. And these are the smallest ones that Rio Rondo makes. So I took a bit off. All right, so your buckle goes on the side that does not have the point. And you want it. Uh, this way. I don't know if you just see how that is. This is your back side. That doesn't sound right. Uh, it's the uh, wrong side. So, I think I'm just getting a little punchy here. I've been at it for a while. I'm not sure how long this video is going to end up being. Hopefully it's just a one-parter, not a four-hour saga. Okay. Keep my videos around an hour at the most because I don't think anybody can sit unless nothing I'm doing is riveting enough for you to sit for that long. But um, here's the other, it's really supposed to be a reference. You can fast forward it and back it up and whatever. Okay, so. Pieces. I almost feel like getting out a microscope here. Okay. And then we'll put geez, glue underneath my fingernail. That was uncomfortable. We are so close to done here. And I think the family's getting squirrely. I'm not getting the silence in the back. That's all right. They can wait. That was not enough. Okay, we'll put those aside. We're filing. I still have to put the uh, girth strap in to the center. And yeah, we'll do that in a minute. So here's the, um, yeah, it didn't follow the actual curve of that. That's all right. So we know it fits, right? Let's just check that. Now we need to create our, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a ticker point because that's much more finished looking, right, the point. Um, and then we create a series of these, uh, two, three, whatever, depending upon how long your strap is. So the picture shows two, so I'm just going to make two. Um, you can do four. You could probably get four out of these. Um, so I'm going to pre do that. Flip it over. Now, if, if the leather glues to itself, it's more likely to stay than to be elastic. So I'm going to go ahead and let it wrap itself as well, wrap the leather. So um, I'm going to go that far. Flip that over, I only need two, so I'm not going to try and do a side-by-side. -side. And then go ahead and 
And the extra. And not that I don't think it will stay, but I'm going to go ahead and clip it. And then a little bit further down, I'm going to do another one. So, let's see. Gosh, glue all over my fingers. All right. And a little bit further down. I mean, you could make that longer in the pattern if you wanted to, too. Obviously, any modifications that, that works for you. So, pre wrap it. You notice it's actually wrapping in the opposite direction. That was unusual. There. Okay, we'll go there. Over there. Here's what we're going to do. We have to have um, billet straps, right? And I set it up so we only need one because the saddle you saw, it only had one. So I'm going to go ahead and use some just regular old leather lace. And I can make this as long or as short as I want, but I do need to skive it. So the picture of the billet actually stuck out away, so I'll be nice and I'll go ahead and make sure I um, let them stick out a ways. And then I need to skive. Yeah. Yeah. So I could use, um, this is a 25 blade with a number four handle. Um, I also use an 11 with a three handle uh, point on this. This is really nice leather lace. It's just really easy to skive. Love this stuff. All right. And there we go. Whoops. That's Okay, um, now we have this, and we're going to glue this center front, all right, so right behind our stirrup bars, I'm sorry, tree bars there, so we'll go, and yes, some of it has to be on the aluminum, but I'm not going to wait for this to dry, because if it's going to be on the aluminum, here's what I do. Let's fold this in half. It's really cool, right? Fold it in half. So your finger press your center. And then it should be pretty easy to eyeball center and just load it like that. See? Pretty cool trick, huh? And now we are ready to attach this. Now you can attach it this way, or you can attach it this way. It's not going to be seen. Um, um, and I th that's how you'll need to do this. I'm going to do a dry fit real quick and see if I even need. No, not going to need to. Okay. So you see how that's going to fit, and then we have this nice little finish in the front. It's not entirely white. I know it's cream. Who knew that white came in so many colors? You ever decide to paint your, the interior of your house white and you go to get paint chips and you just say, I'm looking for white, and then they hand you like four pages of white. It just cracks me up. I had done that to my husband. He's like, well, I just want the house to be white. And so they came home with a full page of white paint chips. I said, do you want the blue white, the yellow white, the red white? I want the brown white. All right, so if you notice, I just did the back. I, I, I like to do things in pieces. Um, it gives me more time to work. Okay, so there's your flat saddle all the way around, right? And now I don't, I, and I really only went up to right about, I see I only glued right up to about here. And that's because I don't want to accidentally glue this stuff down. I need this 
uh, open for my stirrups. Okay, so I go down the tree and then along the front here, but I need to leave um, the the see if it folds over and I glue it completely down. I'm not going to get my stirrup leathers in, right? So watch this. How we do this. Now I go in the center a little bit over where the bars are, right? Because I want to get a little bit of fabric in there or leather that's in there, whatever that is. And then um, I can do a little bit of my stair leather or my uh, billets, right? And then I want to make sure I get my front here. So it's if you see how I'm not, not in this area. Okay, that's the best way to say it. And then I'm going to go ahead and push this up. And I want to make sure this is just on the edge of the front. And there can be a little bit too much glue. We just work that off. See, this is still open. I can still get in there to do my stirrup leathers on both sides. Pretty tight, but see, stirrup leathers are right there. And make sure those still open up. They didn't get glued. Right? So if I pull it back, there's my stirrup bars. And pull this back. Oops. Want that to stay. Make sure that stays stuck. So quite frankly, I think I'll take I'll probably take some white paint and make that white in the front there. Because it didn't quite come out white. And then we can do this now, I think. We need something round. Um, here's the all um, shopping might work, but I need to be able to bend so I can get that in my tree. I don't want to go too far back because I want this to be able to come up, right? And there we have a racing saddle, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what was that picture? Let's see how close we are. Mm -hmm. What's that picture? So there's our picture, and there's our. should do this real quick so make sure these billets and you can poke holes in in because we looked at that picture and there's holes in here so you could poke some holes to make it you know pretend like there's actually a buckle tongue which we don't use right um and um i'm gonna let it sit for a while and um i'll be back okay so i'm just taking some acrylic paint and i wanted to show you something here that i thought was a nice little detail um, I wanted to paint the front here because that was cream and I really want the whole thing to be white. So what I'm also doing is I'm going to um, edge coat. Okay, so that even back here, which I should probably, yep, even back here, I've got white. Okay, so I'm using paint to edge coat the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that should take care of some of this rough edges here too that, yeah, that wouldn't be very realistic, so. Mm -hmm. da -da -da. So as you see, I'm just really painting the edge. Sometimes it comes off a little bit and you just kind of wipe it away. Most paint takes to, I'm mean, sorry, most leather takes okay to acrylic, so. That's, that's good. And I think 
another little detail that I thought I'd show with you. Okay, almost done here. So, now I have to put the stirrups on. And these, I want to get right, but I have a tendency to get them wrong. We'll try it. So, I need it to buckle over the bar, right? So, I want to go up this way. find that bar in there. We'll push it up this way and it's just always tricky. I want to put through them once and then never have to redo this again. Right, so, oh, and you can see why I'm using pliers and not fingers. Okay, so there we go. I think the glue inside was still a little dry, so a little wet, so a little no, it's fine. That's fine. We can survive that. And then, you know, they buckle because I glued and put it to a tip, right? Now it's easy to buckle because it's stiff, not gonna fray, and it has a point on it. Pretty good. too long because I determined that I want them just right about right about there so go ahead and pull this up make sure it's in there Well, we can see the buckle, but we don't really want to, right? It's realism. Really wouldn't be a buckle there anyway, so it would be... I guess there would be. Uh, but we don't see the hook, so there would be a hook. It's really weird the way this stuff works, right? Um, then, let's see where that all... Stir up another caper over here. Now, because we did a loop, it's got a little bit more flexibility, right? And then, so, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, put my first it's the first test of how if I've got the um, elastic the right length or not, right? I made it too long, I may have to adjust it by taking apart one of the um, well, we'll see how this works and supposedly, oh yeah, I did put little I put little holes in it, I don't know if you can see them, but I did have little holes okay, so while I was girthing this guy up, what I realized is that I need um I need something to hold the surcingle single in place down here at the bottom. So basically, I uh, found center by folding over. Um, this is some uh, 3 32nd leather lace. I will glue this to the back only, not the front. And then I'll have a loop that I need so that the surcingle single will stay. And I think that's what that loop was, and I thought it was for Martingale. And now I realize that it was not for Martingale. It is for to hold the sur single and now I'm not going to put it too tight because I've got elastic I have to put in there. Um, so, so I did skive a little bit of 332nd. I'm going to make sure that it's a bit of a loop, okay, so it's not pulled tight. Okay, so here it is. The model's all tacked up and um, you'll see it's really a flat saddle. There's the loop that holds the sur single. Stirrups are ahead of the um, 
So we're just gonna go around the top, turn them around, and then you can see how the um, source single is, is hooked. And I have, I just have a small piece of uh, um, fabric there just to protect my model. It's not, um, it's not indicative of a race set, but um, there you go. So I hope you guys have fun with it. Um, you know, make it in a zillion colors and um, you know, see you next time.